Patel. I am uh, working here as a research project staff. My post is general software engineer and I have worked around two years, seven months in MHRD project here. Uh, the project name uh, was Clicker, the Clicker technology which were explained by Patak sir yesterday, uh, I think the day before yesterday and uh, whatever the technologies they explained during that, uh, I have worked on Java. So that's why they have invited me to give you uh, some my explain details in front in front of you uh, related to Java. I am not a lecturer, not a professor, any kind of uh, teacher. So I am only just one kind of uh, expertise in Java, not that much expert also, which is available in industry standards. But uh, as per my knowledge, I will give uh, one kind of consideration in front of you related to Java technology. So Java is the uh, object oriented programming language which is developed by James Gosling at Sun Microsystems. Recently uh, it is merged in Oracle Corporation. Uh, it is general purpose concurrent class based object oriented language. Uh, the basic uh, goal behind the creation of Java is to make it architecture neutral. That means the most popular word platform independent and portable. Uh, it is robust and secure. And the license, it is GPL, general public license. That means anyone can use it and develop it and also can contribute it during its development. <coughs> the word WORA. WORA means write once, run anywhere. It is completely applied to Java programming language because of its basic architecture. There are two words in its basic architecture. The first one is JVM. And the another one is bytecode. What is JVM? JVM is uh, Java virtual machine that executes the Java bytecode. Now what is Java bytecode? Java bytecode is the form of instructions which are completely designed for JVM perspective and on which it executes. Uh, the basic uh, funda is that the Java source files are compiled to bytecode and that run on any JVM. And JVM is a part of JRE. So we can't download JVM directly. That's why for JVM purpose, we have to download JRE. That's why for running any Java application, there must be JRE. Because of that, we will get JVM. And JVM will, uh, JVM will help to execute bytecode, and by which uh, we can run a Java program anywhere. This is a basic block diagram. The first thing, the first basic element is Java source files. Uh, after compilation, the basic command is javac. We will get dot class files. That dot class files having Java byte codes. And that Java byte codes will be uh, operate on JRE. And J JRE will be having JVM. And that will perfectly execute that code. Whether it can be PC or any mobile operating system. So this is basic uh, reason by which we can execute Java anywhere on any platform mostly. Now the basic powerful uh, fundamental of Java is OOPS, Object Oriented Programming. <coughs> it is uh, actually the basic core of Java. The first thing is abstraction. Now I will ask you uh, whenever you see a car, what you observe? Uh, can anyone explain? Uh, basically, when you see a nano car, what you have seen in that? You just uh, observe the outer look, uh, the speed, the vehicle, how it uh, runs on road, like that. So, designing whatever attraction towards that vehicle, you just observe that. That means the basic essential things you just observe. If uh, someone just opened that vehicle, and shows you the engine, the basic uh, architecture, then it will be very critical. So that's why the outer look is very much important. And it is uh, only designed as per the user perspective. That comes the abstraction. Abstraction means showing the only essential parts rather than hiding that parts which are not related to users. So that is very important principle behind oops, object oriented programming, which is one of the basic feature of Java. The next one is encapsulation. Now have you seen the medicines? Medicines are uh, perfectly wrapped. Why it has wrapped? 
because uh, we have to protect that medicine some outside temperature it can harm that medicine also some medicines have to refrigerate within some uh, below temperature likewise our code is also like that some outer code like hacking we have heard security purposes are there some outer code can access our code and also can uh, take benefits uh, which are not uh, properly uh, advised which are not recommended so to proper arrangement of, of our code and for security reasons we have to protect our data and also by some proper way that means by some public methods we have to give access to our data that is nothing but the encapsulation it act just like a wrapper of code and data the code and data are the two basic principles and two basic elements of any programming language so we have to protect that things <coughs> now the next one is inheritance inheritance is most famous oops uh, uh, principle it is nothing but the there is one class which inherits its uh, super class uh, features there are uh, that features which are available to his uh, super class there are two classes the super class and sub class uh, like uh, child has some features from his parents this one property we can see in inheritance the most important use of inheritance is to reuse the code if you are familiar with c or c++ then you may have seen there are different types of inheritance single inheritance uh, multiple inheritance multi level inheritance uh, hybrid inheritance and one more is remaining can one anyone give ha ah, hierarchy okay the next one is polymorphism actually the polymorphism word is biological word polymorphism means uh, one operator can behave certain actions many forms that is basic uh, meaning behind it <coughs> now in polymorphism what what is actually meaning of that in programming uh, it is uh, ability of any reference variable to change its behavior according to conditions now the conditions will come when that uh, variable will execute at run time so depending on the conditions the reference variable will change its behavior and perform the certain actions uh, which is very much important and it is also, it, it comes under the head of polymorphism which is basic principle of java so these are uh, the basic four principles of java now we will go for uh, one simple program this is the most simplest program we all know and uh, i don't think so we have to demonstrate here and execute this program the there is a first part which is the comments i will explain comments in deep later because it is uh, we always neglect that part uh, while developing but it is very most important thing in as per industry standards because uh, i heard in industry uh, there is uh, less lines of code rather than uh, uh, comparing to com uh, lines of code there are more commented lines of code that means the information of code should be written in very standard prescribed way and uh, it can done by the, like this i have written in between that two symbols this is a simple java program call this file as a example dot java uh, this is a class name which we mentioned class example and this is the main method <coughs> now public static void main and in bracket string arguments array public that means uh, this is the main function which we can use anywhere in our project area uh, static means we should not instantiate this function we can directly access uh, void means it will uh, not return in value and main function that means it is a main entry of our program by which our whole program executes now system out dot println <coughs> system is a class and out is also one uh, one of the class variable in that and println is a method which terminates the given string on the line now this is a simple java program uh, which also the output will be like that this is a simple java program like that now what are the standards which we have to follow the first standard uh, during java programming is the most important thing is java is case sensitive so you have to remember its keywords and all uh, further conventions java compiler requires dot java extension so whatever your file will be you have to give extension dot java by convention the name of the class should be match the name of the file that holds the program now it is not actually 
if we see any a basic program which does not consist main, main method, it is not necessary to give the same name, but it is not good as per if you, pro, if you program and if you uh, arrange your whole pro, folder structure of programming. That is why Java recommends you to give the same name whatever the class is essential in that. If the class is having main method, then you must have to give the same name to that program. It is mandatory. All code must reside inside a class. So, whatever code you, you will write, it must have to reside in one particular class. Now, what is Java source file? Java source file is nothing but one compilation unit. It is a compilation unit in which it will ha it, it can have more than one classes. It is not necessary that it will consist only one class. So, it can have more than one classes. There can be inner classes, outer classes like that. Okay. Is it vi visible? And uh, the basic commands, the co for compilation purpose we use uh, javac, uh, I call it as like that, javac and the file name dot java and to execute that compile uh, program we have to use java and file name. <coughs> so, this is a very basic information, you may all know that. Now, I will come to again the comments. Now, there are three types of comments. The first comment is uh, block comment. It can be uh, given like that, the first symbol which I have mentioned before semicomma. <coughs> and the next one is uh, double quoted lines, uh, double forward slash like that. Okay. The third one is documentation comment. Uh, documentation comment, I, I think you are not familiar with that because uh, in my academic uh, career also I was not familiar uh, with that mostly, but, but it is very important thing. Documentation comment mean, means whatever the function, whatever the class you will write, you have to write the basic information related to variables and param parameters inside that. What it will, do, it will do? It will generate one HTML document uh, after giving some kinds of commands. If you are using NetBeans or ID, NetBeans or Eclipse IDEs, there are some basic support for the documentation. If you use some menus in that like in tools, if you go, there is a generate Java doc command. What it does? It does this documentation command throughout the project. It will make one skeleton, one structure in which you can write the whole information which is related to method. Suppose you have designed one program in which you have one method uh, addition. The program is related to calculation. We have to you have to write the purpose of that class above the class and the method uh, above that method whatever and the parameters, the scope and the usage. <coughs> what will happen afterwards if you compile and if you generate the Java, Java doc, the essential Java doc you can represent to anyone and that is the basic technical information which you can generate by using this document comment. So, I will uh, uh, presumably uh, intimate this documentation comment to you because you are going to do some programming. So, you should not ignore this element, you should do documentation comment. You yourself search, you will get different different ideas. <coughs> now, one once again the basic thing, variable declaration. We can uh, declare it as a int, num is the variable name. That this is a general form, whatever the data type and the variable name. Assignment we can do like that by using equal to sign. These are the Java separators, uh, curly bracket, uh, square brackets like that. And now, there are 50 keywords as per the current version of Java. Which is the uh, current version of Java, can anyone tell? Uh, yes. So, there is 50 keywords in that. Uh, 5 keywords are added like that from last two versions. These are the data types. The in There are 4 basic types of data types. The first one is integers, second one is floating point, third one is characters and for, fourth one is boolean. Integer data type consists byte short, ENT, long. Each one has its significant importance, whatever the programming in which it will involve. For example, byte and short, these are basic elements, data types in uh, hardware embedded systems, which are mostly used in that. Boolean is very familiar, we are very familiar with that. Char is also important and floating point, plot and double. <coughs> These we use for calculations and certain other uh, data types. 
Now, type casting is uh, very much important. You know that in C and C++ also, it is very important fact. Uh, this is the general form for that. You have to write that target type in uh, bracket and that particular value. Now, arrays. Uh, arrays is nothing but the group of like type variables which are arranged in a sequence. There are two types of arrays, one dimensional array and multi dimensional array. This is a general form for that. You have to write uh, li just like this. There will be data type and variable name and the symbol. Here are the square brackets. If you want to give the particular size for that array, then you have to mention the size also. Arrays are fixed size. So, whether you are mentioning here or uh, uh, later in programming, it will depend on you. Multi dimensional arrays are also uh, one of the types of arrays. I will uh, specially tell if you are using arrays much more in C or C++, arrays in Java are totally different. It is not common. The practices whichever you have done in C and C++, the practice here in Java is different. So, you will a little bit, little bit you will get confused. The basic uh, fundi is the same, but the uh, in Java there is some different uh, programming structure for array. So, you should take care about that. <coughs> These are the operators. There are uh, many operators. The first one is arithmetic plus uh, negative like that. These all symbols are there. Uh, the operand of the arithmetic operations must be of numeric type. This is uh, most important condition. Now, these are the second operators which we always uh, neglect because it never comes in our mind. This is bitwise operators which are mostly important for hardware embedded engineering uh, softwares. Uh, if you go through foundation of computer science, there is a gets, NAND, AND, NOR, these kinds of gets are there. So, for this purpose, we use these all symbols, bitwise op operators. Now, this is relational operator uh, which, is mo which is mostly used in loops we will see in further slides. And the next one is Boolean logical. This is also we can use in hardware embedded systems. And also in some uh, fuzzy logic like that the algebraic logic, whichever uh, computation, computational logic in, in this the scope of this way Boolean logical operators are there. <coughs> now, uh, we will concentrate on particular Java program. What is the Java program? Actually, there is blocks of code in which we will see there will be different kinds of statements. The first statement comes uh, is the control statements. Now, you are quite familiar with C or C++, I assume. So, based on that, I have not written detailed information. Rather than we will uh, make some kind of conversation later. So, here I will quickly wrap up this point. The first one is if statement. The basic important thing in this all types is conditions. The if statement will consist some condition, else, con else con uh, statement will also may have some conditions or may not have. We can make it as an nested. Similarly, for switch, there will be cases in case of switch. And uh, we can make it as an nested also. While, do while, the difference between do while and do while, there will be first statement uh, which will be executed in do while and later it will be checked. The for and nested for. For is most popular loop in programming language. There is another one, three uh, jump statements in control statement, which we completely neglect. This is break, continue, and return. Uh, we uh, break we use in switch. We know that, and uh, continue we are we will use in if loop like that. In certain situations, it, it comes, and return is also we uh, we use always. Now this is actually the structure of Java class. There should be uh, comments also above, I forget to write. The name, class, class name, this, these are the type, these are the different kinds of methods. Uh, is, uh, the name, type, method name, the parameters are very much important. The parameters are the, are the dynamic activity which we make our program to execute dynamically. We can change the parameters at runtime and by this parameter list we do that. And by this way we can structure our whole class. Now, what are the constructors? Constructors are very basic uh, essential part of class. It initializes an object immediately upon creation. It has the same name as the class. This is basic identification of any constructors, how you will recognize it. 
it will have the same name of that class. There can be parameterized constructors also. It resides and it is syn synthetically similar to method. It, it will looks like a method, but there are two distinguish uh, elements. The first one is there will not be any return type. Okay. And the second one is there, there will be uh, uh, no void like that word you will find. There is an example for that particular, the class box and we have defined one data type and this is the constructor for that particular class box simply and I have written the construct, constructing box and I have assigned that particular data type. So like that way you can uh, define constructors and you can use. So I already told there, are, there can be parameterized constructors. The function, whatever the box function, whichever I have written there, you can pass parameters also in that, which will be applicable for further programming in dynamic usage. This keyword, this keyword is very important thing because if you write some procedural language, like means you are, if you are not taking benefits of object oriented programming, then this keyword is just like one uh, very beneficial thing. Uh, you can access the current object of that whole program by this. Whatever the data types you declared, whatever the return types of functions, you can just uh, observe and you can choose any one of that by using this keyword. If you, use, if you are using IDs, then this keyword you may know. <coughs> to refer the current object of a class. Now string, well, I have not mentioned the string in data types. Why? Because strings are the classes in Java. String is a basic one class in which we make object uh, to use it. Uh, there are several string extraction functions which we can use in Java. And uh, there is most uh, important two string classes. The first one is uh, string itself and another one is a string builder and string buffer. If you do, it, uh, we will look uh, forward for multi-threading programming. Multi-threading program programming in that we have to make our variable thread safe and uh, synchronized. In that case, we have to use a string buffer rather than string. So these are some very uh, famous industrial uh, data types, uh, string buffer and string builder instead of string we use and uh, which are related to this string class. Now uh, the Java class fundamentals. Uh, there are different types of classes as, as I told. The first one is top level, second one is static inner. That means which we don't have to make any instantiation of that class. Another one is a non-static inner. The another one is a local class, which is simple. Anonymous class is also one type of that classes. These are the basic types of classes of Java. Now the Java methods. There are different types of methods uh, in which two most popular and common types are overloading methods and the another one is overriding methods. Actually, these are the types of polymorphism. Overloading methods are called as a compile time polymorphism and overriding methods are called as a runtime polymorphism. In overloading methods, there are simple three things you have to remember. The first one is overloading methods have the same name. The different methods will be there. It will have the same names like the box function whichever we have seen. The similar kind of box functions will be there but it will consist different parameters and also it will consist the different return types. In overriding methods, the thing is different. It will have the same name though it will have the same parameters and same return types. So thing will be changed. So this is the runtime polymorphism and this is the compile time polymorphism. It will decide by the compiler to choose during the overriding method which method it will execute. I hope you have, uh, you have understood this. Uh, in overloading, uh, it will be not same for return types. Okay, if you mention in signature, then uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, there are the Java method. <coughs> Likewise, we can overload the constructors also. Uh, and there are the static methods. Now, what is a static method? The method whichever we will declare, we, we can use the static keyword in front of that by which, we, by which we can access them directly by use of class name. What we actually do, we just uh, make one object of class and by using uh, dot or print element, we access the whole methods of that particular class. 
here uh, if you use a static method there is no need to use uh, no need to in instantiate that particular class you can directly use by using dot operated command line arguments are very powerful funda in uh, uh, hardware embedded system mostly because there are certain things which you depend on that if uh, suppose there are two technologies one is hardware one is software and you have to communicate that both uh, systems suppose uh, for example you have to integrate one java program to one python program python program requires some uh, arguments so there is one fact by which you can pass that in uh, command line arguments are the essential information you can pass at run time here is a basic example of that uh, if you execute that you will compile it and during run you just give some words during that execution word suppose uh, if i compile it and if i give the name java uh, command line and welcome then it will print welcome <coughs> command line arguments are nothing but the just that information which you pass during command line it will captures that and it will use in further programming this is very basic element uh, it will be look like very basic but it is very useful function during programming now inheritance <coughs> as i told there are two uh, basic classes the first one is super class super class which have the properties uh, itself methods and which will be subclassed that means subclass will inherit some properties methods from super class uh, there is a extends keyword which we use to extend uh, the super class now one more uh, thing is that java does not provide multiple inheritance uh, multiple inheritance means in which uh, the base that means the subclass will access uh, the methods from multiple super classes more than super classes this one feature which we see in c, c or c++ it is not available in java but it can be provided by interface which we will see later uh, now one more thing is that in inheritance that is abstract classes abstract classes and the methods <coughs> abstraction which i told earlier in uh, oops principle the abstraction principle is totally related to these abstract classes abstract classes and methods represents the abstra abstraction principle of oops uh, abstract classes are defined by using abstract keyword um, do you, abstract classes cannot be instantiated it will consist only method signatures <coughs> but it can be subclass that means in inheritance we can use abstraction that's why i have mentioned this abstract classes in the other heading of inheritance that uh, that's why the abstract classes can be used uh, as a extend extended now package um, the basic goal behind the package is to make your all work according to functionality usability and category there can be a different perspective in your whole programming uh, some programming is related to database some programming will be related to utilities some programming will be re related to business logic and some programming will be related to design so you what we you will do you will make them organize them according to their usage you will make folders and you will make all classes uh, applic applicable to that by which you will make one package that is nothing nothing but the package the package organizes the classes into directories according to their functionality usability and category the general form is as it is package and package name now in package there is consideration of access modifiers private default which is also known as a no modifier and protected and public default you will never see because uh, default is default it uh, it is no modifier if there is no any access modifier then it means there is default so uh, this is actually some uh, uh, table i have created according to class member access for the classes and these are the basic uh, access points <coughs> here y represent s and n represents no for same class the private data type will be uh, the private data type access will be s Uh, default will be as protected and public for same package subclass that means there we, there is a, a package but uh, there is a subclass also for perspective uh, for that program but the private will not work default will work protect will work and public will also work for the same package but it is uh, in same package but it is not a subclass 
that means it it is not extended then in that case uh, the private will not work default will work protected will also work and public will also work if suppose there are different packages suppose the util package utilities package and database package there are different packages then the private uh, access modifier will not work default will also not work protected will work work and uh, public will work and suppose there is different package and also there is no any subclasses in that case private will also not work default is also not work and protected is also not work but public will work you will see public will work at any case and uh, private will work only in same class so this is basic thing protected will work in this particular things only one case one case the protected will not will not work in different packages where the where there is no any subclass so this is basic usage of uh, access modifiers now how we can use packages for uh, usage of package there is word import so that's why we always tell importing packages the import keyword is there the example is like that import and import that particular package star uh, asterisk we can use like that java util dot i always tell it as a star so uh, otherwise we have to write it like this if we want to write it without using package then we have to write in this fashion but if you want to use by using package then it is written like that now interface <coughs> what is the java interface java interface contains uh, constant declarations and or uh, method signatures and or variable declarations that are declared to be both static and final that are nested types and uh, there are no method bodies at all at interface the interface can extend another interface one interface can extend another interface uh, the interface and implement keyword the interface is the also one keyword which we use during creation of interface itself and uh, implement for usage of that interface if we want to use that interface then we have to use implement keyword interface supports multiple inheritance now here is the power of inheritance uh, com comes in back in java we already told that there is no support but interface interface provides and uh, fulfills the need of multiple inheritance okay now another one is, one thing is exception handling exceptions like the word suggest it is an event which disrupts your normal flow of programs uh, during execution of a program it is abnormal condition which can arise in program at any time Uh, there are two types of exception first one is checked exception and another one is unchecked exception the checked exception will consist try catch and finally an unchecked exception will consist throws uh, the basic package under which the exception hierarchy will come it is java.lang and the root class of the exception handling is uh, throwable class these are the basic the things which you have to remember according to technical standards what are the types of exception and in which we can handle the exception handling <coughs> now what are the methods by which we can handle the exception the first whole so method is try catch finally which is checked nested try catch is also there multiple catch that means only one uh, try will be there and multiple surrounding catch statements will be found then throw throw is also one uh, uh, variable in java exception which we, we by which we can throw that exception particular we, we will get it by throwable instance and we will throw it throws is uh, just like unchecked exception whatever the exception will come we have to throw it like that the goal is behind that and another one is try and finally without catch also we can use try or finally the finally clause is optional it is not mandatory to use each time Uh, each try statement requires at least one catch or finally close okay there is a corresponding clause for try uh, it will be catch or it will be uh, finally <coughs> now this is basic exception hierarchy we always know that error is error but error is also one exception uh, error is exception but it is very serious exception that's why it is called as error that's why we cannot handle that exception the exceptions which are handled that are exceptions but which are not handled that are error 
that is why error is also comes under the exception. The basic root class is throwable, whatever the error you are finding, it is also part of throwable class. And uh, exception and error, these are the two subtypes of that superclass. And after that, others, I, I exception, runtime exception, these are further hierarchical uh, classes in that. Okay, this is the main hierarchy for exception usage. <coughs> now, multi threading. Multi threading is most powerful tool in Java. Uh, because of multi threading, the different kinds of concurrent working protocols implement. And uh, it is built in support which Java provides. By, which, by using multi threading, we can do uh, multi threading programming as well as concurrent programming. There is the two things one programming which is related to process another programming which is related to thread. Now, we can create the thread by using these two methods. The first one is implementing runnable interface and another one is extending thread class and methods. Okay. Now, uh, runnable interface threading is mostly preferred. Can anyone tell me why this is preferred? Uh, actually, runnable interface uh, we implement and uh, thread class and method is comes under the uh, extend. That means, it is a super class and as I told, Java does not support multiple inheritance. That is why we will use it only once, if we use thread class and methods. And start function, which is most important function in uh, thread, it will execute only once, if we use uh, extending thread class. But for proper object oriented programming and proper structure of program and execution, if we use implements runnable, it will, it will be beneficial. That is why runnable interface threading is mostly preferred for a good structure of program. But it does not mean that uh, extending thread class is not used, it is also used in certain situations, it is, it is also required. <coughs> now, there is another one kind of multi threading as I told, there is concurrent multi threading also. There are two processes which you have to active and uh, in process concurrently. So, for this concurrently uh, support, we have to, we have one another package. These all two packages whichever we have seen. Uh, the interface and the thread class is it comes under by default java dot lang, but it will come under this package java util dot concurrent. It is also one multi threading activity uh, which is specially used for concurrent multi threaded programming. It is newly released and mostly used java util concurrent package. So, you should also use uh, uh, in case of multi threading programming. Okay. And as per threads can be suspended, resumed, stopped and synchronization. Now, what is mean by synchronization? I will give one example. In hospitals, in operation rooms, you will see there is a bulb. During operation inside, there will be bulb on. And after operation is off, the bulb will goes off. The same acti activity will be done by the synchronization. If there are certain threads and you want particular thread will be active for a particular time, then you will put that synchronization keyword there and you will be, you will do the further required uh, methods related to that. So, that uh, can be also we can do by using multi threading, there is a synchronization facility is also available. <coughs> now, there are two most important thread methods, the first one is join method and the another one is a slip method. Slip method we use generally because if we want to uh, suspend our program for a certain time, then we use slip. Join method is used in concurrent programming mostly. And uh, I actually the join methods alternative is this one, whichever I showed you already, this package. If you do not want to use join, because in huge programming, that means uh, if uh, you have some huge infrastructure of programs, in that it is not beneficial to use join method. So, that is why you can use this method, uh, this package java util dot concurrent, in which you can uh, wait uh, until the thread will stop, it will over and further instructor instructions will be executed of your programming. So, these are most two popular methods. There are other methods also. You can see that by using the Java do. Now, applet. I heard that you have all go, gone through the applet because you have sent some applets here to IIT Bombay. So, though I will explain. Applet is a Java program or small application that run on a browser enabled with Java. And applet needs web browser or applet viewer tool. Applet is a heavy weight component of Java. So, there is uh, some distinguishes between the swing, which you will see in advanced Java and applet. App applet comes under the, this package, the AWT package and uh, it can be used like this. Uh, there, there is not any main method. 
but you can use it as per the Friscap method. This is a simple applet which extend this superclass applet, and there is public void paint function and uh, graphics g, <coughs> and you can draw a string by using this uh, method. Now, how to execute the applet? To execute an applet, there is a short HTML text file which will contain the applet tag. This is an applet tag, applet code in which you have to write the class name and width and uh, height. You can uh, execute this uh, applet by using the short HTML text, otherwise there is one concatenated method in which you will include this comment inside the program. As I told the comments, you will use comments to represent this code. You will use this uh, commented included statements be, uh, above the code and by which you can directly execute that program and you can you, you can view by using applet viewer. Okay? Now one most important thing is IO. IO means taking input from users uh, which are generally done by buffer reader, scanner classes, different different, different classes are there. And the command line argument is also uh, considered as IO operations and uh, file operations, fine handling, reading and writing files, this are also comes under the IO packages. The package for representing all these activities are java.io. Now a very important and powerful package as per the industry standards, it is a collection. Uh, the collection is a Java framework for desktop applications and uh, mostly used as a back-end software system. Um, that it is the one most important application programming interface. It can be treated as a standard programming interface. It is made up by set of interfaces for groups of objects. And the examples are, various examples are there for collections. The array list, vector list, hash map, tree map, set, stack, queue, like that, all the things. And it comes under this Java util package. Now, uh, this is also one important hierarchy which you have to remember. This is the collection API hierarchy in which the collections will consist these three parameters uh, elements, the queue, list and set and map, sorted map. Map, uh, there are two maps as per I used, hash map and tree map. Tree map and hash map, the difference is that the tree map will sorted map comes under. The sorting which you can do and list and queue. Uh, queue will consist different kinds of uh, uh, stack, queue like that properties and list will consist the link, li link list, double, double link list like that. By list you can implement stack or queue also. Now uh, what are the different editions and versions of Java? Uh, these are the different editions, Java card. Java card is basically used for SIM cards of mobile phones which is uh, basically uh, used for mobile technologies. Another one is Java Micro ME, which is uh, mostly used for hardware embedded systems. Java standard editions is used for application development programming, whether uh, it is also used for uh, web applications, but web applications the most preferred edition is enterprise edition. And Java FX is uh, used for multimedia applications. <coughs> this is the web URL for downloading these all softwares which you can find anywhere in Google. Now different kinds of versions Java has been released from starting point of view. We will see Java JDK 1.0 is there which was released in 1996. Then 1.1 released in 1997. They have inserted two keywords inside that. No one knows why they have inserted. So they have added it and they have changed SDK into JDK. So it comes like Java 2 SDK 1.2. After that in 2000, 1.3 is there, 1.4 is there, 5.0 is there up to 2004. Uh, but after that, they have suddenly gives of the 1.x numbering. 1.4 there is directly 5.0 in Java versions. It comes under the 2004 and uh, after that in Java 6, uh, the, they have dropped the 2 and they get rid of that 0.02. So now, the, according to these standards and revisions are there, which you will find. Uh, don't confuse, there is no any one point, after 1.4, there is no any 1.5, okay. So we will conclude here like, Java is a simple, secure, portable and object oriented, robust, multi-threaded, architecture neutral and 
interpreted, high performance, distributed, and dynamic language. Most widely used programming language for commercial purpose as well as open source development. And as we know all, and uh, I think it is one of the subjects of your uh, assignment, Google and Android INC have chosen Java as their key pillar in the creation of Android operating system. So there is very significant importance current uh, programming uh, for Java. So these are the references which I used so suddenly. Uh, I told to give you a talk uh, yesterday, so I re reference, references this. So any doubts, anything? You can discuss because uh, I'm, I have worked some little bit related to, according to entrance standards, but I can give the answers mostly. Uh, actually, abstract classes need not to implement the all methods in interfaces. Interfaces, if you implement, then you have to uh, define each and every method, whichever you have uh, written in interfaces. In abstract class, the case is not like that. In abstract classes, uh, abstract class methods, you can um, just uh, whatever the methods you have defined in abstract classes, it is not needed to implement that all. And uh, abstract classes are faster than uh, interfaces. Uh, that means uh, as per the speed and all the things, compilation. I will uh, personally, I will give some suggestions related to work whichever you will do here. Uh, the first thing which you will follow, I, I always follow like that path. Uh, understand the problem statement. The basic problem behind our Indian people is that we never understood the problem statement. We go directly for programming. This is very bad. Uh, so basic, uh, as per uh, conventions, you have to understand the problem statement properly. If you understood problem statement 100%, then you can analyze it and you can make your algorithms as per other requirements. Once you will, uh, you can able to write algorithms, then go for designs. And you can design and you can make the coding according to that. Then afterwards, uh, give time for coding. And uh, I will uh, advise you, uh, the time you spend for coding, you should spend um, more time for testing. Because testing needs some more developed code. And uh, it will enhance your work and it will make your work quality. Uh, it will increase the quality of your work. Like that, you uh, you can implement your role, whatever the internship you, you will perform here. Okay, so I hope uh, these are my details. You can contact me at any time. This is, I am one of the matters of your uh, internship. So you can contact me. And uh, if you have any doubts related, related to Java, you can mail me in this email ID. I will uh, try my best to answer that all queries. Okay, thank you. Thank you.